everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order for the license hearing of safety. Um, we'll start out with a roll call. Alderperson Feldy. I'm here. Alderperson Heidemann. Here. Alderperson Russ is excused. Um, Alderperson Ackley not. Um, we'll start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty. I think everyone knows everyone here, unless yeah, I think we're all good here. So we will uh, go with uh, number five, approval of minutes from March 13th, 2024. Move and approve. I'll second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Item number six, RO number 123-23-24, by Chief Montanello. No, go ahead. Pursuant to section 24-400 of the Municipal Code, I herewith submit my annual report for the Fire Department for the year of 2023. Thank you. Um, so, Alder Feldy, I'm going to switch screens. Please let me know if you can see this. Uh, can you see that at all? Uh, well, no. Are you on the computer? I am. Because I'm wondering if I got to click. Okay, I can see all of you sitting around the table. Yeah, you'd have to share it. Yeah, okay. Let me. <laughs> we loser. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know either. Chuck, do you? Barb, you look nice today. Thank you. I think if entire you entire screen maybe. Entire screen. No. Oh, okay. There you go. And then, and then you flip up. You hit. Got to hit this. You're gonna have to click on that one and hit share this. I can't read what that says. I think there you, there you go. go. All right. Hit share and then go over to your other page and she should be able to see. Now, it. can you see the cool looking screen that says fire department on it? Yes. Oh, oh good. Thank you all. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So thank you for the time. I know uh, we got a lot on there, so I'll make it quick. Um, I'm just bringing you up to speed on the annual report. It was in the packet too, Barb, if you want to look at that. But uh, just real quick, uh, just some highlights of 2023. Obviously, uh, we had some more retirements, so we hired the positions to fill those vacancies. So you see the pictures there of uh, the five, six individuals, seven individuals, I forgot, that we hired. Um, and uh, the last one that just came off probation or will be coming off in April is Andre right there. So. Um, and then we had a promotion to fill a vacancy uh, from one of our retirees. So Jordan Jude got promoted to lieutenant in 2023. And then also because of those other vacancies, we filled those uh, driver apparatus, what we call our fire equipment operators. Uh, so they got promoted as well. Uh, we had a couple retirements uh, in mid-year. So those two were in uh, the year and then the others were previous vacancies that we were filling. Uh, so, uh, the good news in 2023, as you are well aware, and thank you for all the support in the past, um, you approved us to uh, increase staffing one uh, member per shift. Uh, so that will be coming in 2024. Truly appreciated. And, and those individuals will be put on the ambulance uh, to, to start staffing that fourth ambulance. Uh, right now, we're doing it in the peak hours because we don't have the full and the other, the other partner is being uh, staffed by overtime, but eventually as we hire these three new people, we'll transition off of the overtime as much as possible. It's still gonna require overtime as well, but we'll do the best we can to get it. Uh, we are promoting those three lieutenants to captains, uh, three of the existing lieutenants to captains. We just did that. Uh, that will be also coming at the end of April. Um, and uh, we are going to the six captain model. So two will be housed at our headquarters station and then one captain at, at the outlying stations. Um, so uh, unfortunately, we only had two ca uh, lieutenants past the ca captain's uh, promotional process. So we'll have to do it again in the fall to get that third captain. 
uh, this is this is no we're not increasing officers uh, numbers we're just taking three cap, uh, lieutenants and promoting them to captains so it's the same number of officers uh, in that packet, you also saw some of our incidents that we had, uh, some statistics over the last five years. Uh, one thing note that uh, we you, you can see in 2023, we were just a smidge under what 2022 numbers were. If you recall in 2022, we had that storm come through um, in that summer. So in um, one day, we had over 100 calls alone in in a two hour period so it kind of that storm really skewed some numbers but but again it, we're still increasing over our average what we are in the past so 2022 just because it had that storm was a little bit on the anomaly side uh, that's why it was a little higher but oh uh, also uh our all our paramedics operate under a uh the medical director, uh, which is out of Aurora, uh, Dr. McGlynn is our new medical director. She, what, what is awesome and phenomenal about her is she's actually spending um, a day with us every week. So every Wednesday she's at station three and, and all our members, you know, can stop in, ask questions, talk to her, get to know her, where in my career that was never done. I never knew my medical control other, uh, other than when I, he interviewed me for becoming a medic and that was it. <laughs> so this is awesome. And we operate, our licenses are basically under her license. So she, if we do something that she doesn't feel is right, she can actually pull our license and we then we don't, we can't operate as medics, if that makes sense. Um, we did some uh, other things for station five, our engine that's housed out there. We it made it, it went from a basic life support to an advanced life support. There's no ambulance at station five. so. When they get on scene, they can provide ALS care to our patients while the ambulance from another station comes in and responds. So during that uh, period of time, they, they're doing everything that medics do. So that's a great thing. And then uh, I wish Mike was here because he could explain what the LVOs are, but these are crucial timing wise. Uh, Orange Cross used to do it before. And then in 23, the hospital approached us and asked if we could start responding to our city for those, even though uh, Orange Cross used to, because it's not a 911, it's a transfer from a hospital to a different hospital. Uh, so we started doing those in 2023. And the average time when Orange Cross was doing it was 78 minutes from door to door. Ours is now an average time of 40 minutes. So those that 20 to 30 minute difference is saving saving lives and uh they've acknowledged us many many times already so that's a phenomenal feat we're very proud of um some purchases that we made we uh in 23 uh, we are continuing our purchases of turnout gear uh again with 75 members you got to they're only good for x amount of years 10 years typically unless you use them more and more and more uh it's even less so we try to rotate and keep our our gear within that timeline so uh, we're working on that. We replaced uh, windows and doors at stage four that were molding and leaking. Uh, so uh, obviously they were not as efficient as could be. So we brought them up to speed. Um, and then we, uh, you, you approved that amulet. So we really, really appreciate that, even though it's still not here. Uh, it won't be here uh, for a couple more years. Um, we just got word that this has nothing to do with our annual report of 23, but our other amulet set two years ago, you approved. Hopefully we'll be here by June, fingers crossed. So we're still, it, it's still backlogged like everything else. For the, the, yeah. the, the turnout gear now, mm -hmm. does that, does it like have like an expiration date on yeah. it? it yeah. Does. yeah, So But you, know, you can increase that in, or not increase, decrease it by, by more usage, I guess, is the way. Kind of, so so yeah. So I mean, so let's say it's, is it like a 10 year or something like that? But that 10 year is typically the manufacturer's the like, yeah, the max, and uh, it, like Chicago, Milwaukee, New York sure. that use it more, have more fires. That might be a seven year or a five year. Okay. We're at the 10 year mark. So okay. yeah, we, we don't, um, if, if we got exposed to a lot of chemicals, it would even decrease it more, but no, we're at the 10 year mark and we're trying to keep our uh, gear all replaced. Uh, the goal uh, many wounds on Chief Romas or even before Chief Romas was to have two sets per person okay. because if you go into a fire, you're wearing your gear, sure. 
now you can't use it for so you want to get all the carcinogens out so you got to wash it well we got to have that spare gear because you're still on duty sure. and uh, so that's why we kind of wanted to move for the uh, the tube sets but it, they're just so expensive it's hard to do that with our large numbers so yeah good question thank you uh some capital projects we purchased in 23 obviously the station uh three uh land acquisition which again thank you all for your support uh it's it's now uh in the uh closing phase of it the land was uh, you, council approved the land purchase so it's just now the legality of when the closing is all that so i don't have a time frame but uh we're excited thank you all for all the help uh that you put into it and uh and all that chuck uh, and, and the council for their approval because uh it is well well needed as you know um so just some of the quick things that it identifies, it'll bring it up to ADA a, a compliance with the new station, uh, the showers, uh, the, my favorite picture there. Uh, it's just even for men, uh, it's not good. Uh, so it'll be gender neutral shower bathrooms, which is great, more energy uh, efficient, and uh, as well as uh, some of the pipes that are failing. And then one of the big things too is our emergency generator. Remember, we have to have a generator. We got to be able when we lose power in the city or anywhere. We got to be able to still respond, uh, open the doors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, our emergency generator is no longer supported, as I mentioned. Parts are DPW won't even. They can't. They're trying to do the best they can, but the band aids are failing. So, uh, fire prevention. So we had our third annual fire uh, academy. Um, so uh, we uh, had a smaller class this year, but uh, hopefully ne next year or this fall, when we do it again, uh, you all will be able to, uh, to attend if, if it fits your schedule. Uh, we continue with our school programs, uh, uh, educating over 3,000 students in our community. And then one thing that uh, we had started again, uh, we do our a uh, WHBL on air every third uh, Friday. Uh, it's third Friday, my apologies, not third Thursday, third Friday of the month. So um, AC Lubert usually goes there and does it because he, he does a great job speaking. Uh, I don't I don't like talking on the radio. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll do safety tips, anything that or if there's certain fires that are uh, reoccurring or kind of being, uh, you know, this is consistent. We'll we'll bring up safety tips for that. Uh, training, uh, we migrated into a new training software, which has allowed us to track our, our training. So it looks like we've done a tremendous, tremendous amount of training. We're still doing the same training, maybe a little more with time, but it's our tracking software that was failing. We did, we weren't able to track everything that we were doing. So now we are, which is a phenomenal thing because this will help us meet our, our ISO, uh, goals. Um, so yeah. And then, uh, as you know, we had our uh, sister city visit. Uh, so that was one of the big things that we uh, took him around the city and, and got him to do some of our training and participate in some of our training events. Uh, we also brought in a uh, yoga, a Humble Warrior Project does yoga. So our member, all three shifts did yoga uh, to try to help with our mind. And then that's a program that we really liked and the guys liked. So we may continue to implement it. Uh, this young lady that, uh, owns the humble warrior uh, she did it for free for first responders so it's no cost to us uh, which we are grateful for and um, the, the the crews actually liked it so we'll continue to bring that uh, each year to our department so if I'll be glad to answer any questions but I appreciate the time for that so on the, on the medical director is that does that change every couple of years or since she works for Aurora, is, is she assigned to you? And then, if, well, if she left Aurora, then she'd have to, you'd have to get somebody else. But normally, how long are they in place? Yeah, they're typically in place for a while. So okay. um, when I first started five years ago, it was Dr. Zills. And uh, because they started taking over so many different medical, uh, emergency medical services, uh, departments, um, he was just too busy. So he is actually split the split the so he's south in Grafton oh. and Dr. McGlynn, which you saw the picture of, she's actually housed out of Aurora here. Okay. Or in, in Kohler. Uh so she is actually local 
and she lives in Grafton, so she's not planning on going anywhere. So we hope to have her for quite some time. Uh, Dr. Kunkel was the previous one before her. He was in the military and he actually got a job with the Navy uh, doing some things down in out in uh, California. So he couldn't do this. So that's why he left. But he was doing a good job, too. And, and also on the retirement, so it was like 13 years and 17 years. So these were people that we hired from previous that were, okay. Yeah. Now those were mid year. Those were the only because we had retirements the previous year. So that's why we hired seven. Right. Okay. Th those two retired mid year. Okay. So that's why they were. But they, it was like they weren't here for 25 years. That, that's so. Correct. They had experience right. elsewhere. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's why it was such a short time for them. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Um, it's one question. It's not in the report, but I guess it's just a, it's just a general question. It's just like, do you have like, um, like do, you, do you, if say you get a really bad call, do you guys have like a fresh, like you're talking about the yoga thing, do you guys have like a, like almost like where they bring, where they, they can see psychology, if, yeah. they get, so if you get a bad call, that's like really can mess with you. <laughs> you yeah. <can. laughs> Excellent question. So we do actually, we just utilized it, uh, last week. Um, if you recall, we had, um, there was a, a shooting on the south sure. side yeah. and uh so our members the way that transpired is t typically typically they wouldn't have a debrief for that kind sure. of because uh, yeah usually it's a pd incident where mm -hmm. we go to assist them sure in this case it was toned out as a regular ems call okay not regular but an ems call sure. and so our members were there uh, because police was busy they're mm -hmm. doing other things yeah. and uh so it ended up that our guys, when they got there, we did. They recognized that it was a, sh a gunshot. Sure. Yeah, and they were in basically, if I could say it this way, they were in harm's way. Sure. And it kind of it reality set yes. in after the call. And oh, it, yeah. It, it did affect them. So we ended up doing uh, what we call a debrief, a critical incident stress debrief. So a CISD, we called outside help uh, member to come in and talk to our members the following shift day because it really did. Uh, because they could have been, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's our guys aren't trained for that, you know, well, like yeah, PD is. And, yeah, well, yeah, and even sometimes some of the incidents when you have like, you sure. a bad fire and it's things happen. It's, yep. It's, it's yep. Have that, so. Okay. So, yeah, good question. Yep. We did that. So, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Looking for a motion? No. Uh, motion to uh, approve or accept. I'll second. Okay, she's made and seconded. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. That is approved. Uh, we'll go with number seven, uh, resolution number 195-2324, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an agreement for the urban search and rescue emergency response services for the period July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2026. Thank you, Alder Decker. So uh, a couple years ago, you approved, uh, allowed us to uh, become part of the Wisconsin State uh, Task Force response, uh, Task Force One, which would be a, a response within the state or outside the state if needed. Uh, and that's been going great. We have are working on getting seven of our members. We had three original uh, and now we, we are getting those four uh, trained up. So this is just a, a contract that we have to do every two years uh, uh, for the state. So it's no, nothing's changed. Everything's reimbursable. If we get deployed um, by the, the state or the feds, uh, you know, again, um, it helps us. In fact, uh, I, I think I mentioned it too. We had two deployments this past two months ago or within two months, one to Elkhart Lake and then one to Oostburg. So the training that they got and they're learning there, remember they were bringing back to make us better. So yep. yeah, we just assisted uh, uh, Sheboygan County as well. So it's th those are not reimbursable. That's a mutual aid, yeah, kind of but, but, but it helped. But the Our guys weren't trained and, and yeah. Okay. So it is a great thing. So we really appreciate your support. Thank you again. Um, be glad to answer any questions. Well, I, I think it's a really good program. I think it's, you know, anytime we can get in to help to get in there. Plus, it's necessary for the for, you know for the, for the rest of the citizens of the state. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic program. Move to approve. Mark. 
excuse me? Oh, looking for a second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Motion's made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. I didn't see you sneak in. <laughs> <laughs> number uh, number eight, resolution number 190 three eighteen. 24 resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an agreement with Waukesha County Technical College for the for clinical experience with the Sheboygan Fire Department. Okay, thank you again. So um, when we have medic students that need clinical time, uh, in this case, Waukesha County needs our, uh, we need to be classified as a uh, clinical site. Uh, so this was just one of the, the contracts uh, that they have a standard thing. So it, it is just no different than LTC or what we've done uh, recently with MATC or working on uh, in order for us to allow non Sheboygan members to, to ride and gain experience clean up clinical time. Uh, we have to get this signed. So that's all it's requesting that uh, attorneys went through it and, and uh, both actually both attorneys to make sure uh, uh, the language is good and it's just again to allow medic students or uh, emt students or from waukesha to come ride with us because we're busier and yeah. get experience and it's a good thing to get them a we, oh, absolutely we wonderful show them we show them sheboygan and go oh okay. could well we right. need some people <laughs> truly, truly, we already had an applicant from okay. and from matc which is out of milwaukee we sure. had an applicant so it is a phenomenal program so I really appreciate the sport and doing that as well. But yeah, good, this is good just, recruitment tool. It, it is. <laughs> and even if we didn't get anybody sure. uh, to get them the experience too. Absolutely. It, Absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? How long is the program? Just kind of curious. So every uh, class is different, obviously. Uh, this, again, all based on how many contacts it gets. So that's what we're doing. We're not teaching them. Oh, okay. We're, um, they're gaining experience on the ambulance, so we're proctoring.